Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Global Space Program 1.11. In this video I present my model of the T-38, the trainer that the astronauts train in, of course, and also fly around in. I decided it was about time that we had one in Kerbal Space Program, since naturally, of course, it is the thing that they should be flying in. And I have made everything except for the landing gear and the engines. So this time the control surfaces are built in and we will see how that works out for us. Uh, in the case of the left horizontal stabilizer and right horizontal stabilizer, they are uh, just all moving, so that wasn't any difficulty. So the main trick is the rudder and the ailerons. The flaps do not work right now, and that is because they are on the same surface as the ailerons. The ailerons are part of the left wing, and so I don't know about putting two different surfaces on the same uh, two different control surfaces on the same part, so we'll save that for later. For now, we will test the ailerons, and you can see they are set to just roll, and the horizontal stabilizers... I don't know why it's a different dialogue. Uh, that's a little bit peculiar, isn't it? Here, uh, we've got the roll. I know that FAR is on this, because it's got the current wing mass, it's con uh, calculating the wing mass on its own, and has this mass strength multiplier just like this does, but I don't know why this has this dialogue here. I guess that's only for all moving ones, and when it's not an all moving one, it has this deal here. But anyway, uh, just the pitch for the horizontal stabilizers and just the yaw for the vertical stabilizer with the rudder built in. So if uh, this all works out very nicely, then I'll try and do it for some of the other planes so that uh, you don't have to use the V9 procedural wings, but no guarantees there because uh, that's less of a priority than making new planes for me right now. Uh, the control surfaces, V9 uh, control surfaces are a little bit of a hassle, but not too much. Um, so anyway, we have landing gear. The landing gear is from adjustable landing gear. The engines that you would want are J85s. I'm not going to release the update to the plane mod just yet because I'll make two other planes before doing that. And I think you'll like those too. They are relevant. Uh, so, but I won't tell you what they are until I reveal them. So, uh, first of all, let's test out the T38. And yeah, the mass should be uh, close to its uh, actual dry mass. And we ha should have a fair amount of fuel in here. Let's see how it goes. Okay, now technically the T-38 can get up to Mach 1.3, but I don't have any faith that this is going to end up like that. So, just fair warning, we're going to try to get it close to the speed of sound, but I don't think we can break it. So, uh, fly-by-wire enabled and engines. It was sliding backwards because the runway is sloped up. So, yep, the J85s. I feel like they're a little bit under thrust, but okay. I don't know why their thrust is going down either. Anyway, we can take off, surely. Oh, there we go. Uh, I think it's... It, it's uh, Takeoff speed was pretty good. I think it could have taken off earlier than that. So we've got the fly-by-wire. That's why the roll and yaw are jiggling. That's nothing to do with FAR, by the way. I saw in one comment somebody attributed that to FAR. That's not. That's uh, atmospheric autopilot. Which is fine. I'd, I'd rather it do that than... Uh, us having to think about that too much. Seems pretty smooth so far. Let's test the ailerons. Ailerons. A little bit off, but no problems. You can see the all moving horizontal stabilizers, the rudder like that. Okay. But we can't actually go up that quickly. We just might have a little bit too much drag. We always have a little bit too much drag. <laughs> but everything is being calculated correctly. I mean, FAR is on the wings. The one thing that doesn't have FAR on it is the vertical stabilizer. Uh, that as normal because we don't have a symmetric pair for it. Uh, and the body collider is the right shape and everything. So, yeah, there's no... It's just uh, maybe a little bit too much drag. They are supposed to have an afterburner. Technically, this uh, this jet has an afterburner, but I think the model that 
is being used for it here. That is not being reflected, but I think there might be another J85 available with advanced jet engines, I'm not sure. This one is just called J85-GE-4, but there was one that was that was called General Electric J85. Okay, turning. Seems very stable. It feels like a trainer. It doesn't feel like it's gonna do anything too crazy. Unfortunately, the wing is so thin that the landing gear will inevitably sort of poke out regardless of which landing gear we use for it. Okay, we are at 10 kilometers. Let's just flatten out and see how fast it can go up here. About 33,000 feet. We probably should have more duration than this. Uh, the stage time is being read at 1 hour, 3 minutes and 41 seconds. And judging from what kerosene we're using up that seems to be about right so yeah something's a little bit up here I don't think we can carry too much more fuel but the range is supposed to be something like a thousand nautical miles so if we can't get past Mach 1 or we're I mean even if we went to Mach 1.3 we should be getting a little bit more stage time than that I mean, Wikipedia claims a rate of climb for this of 33,600 feet per minute or 171 meters per second. And I can guarantee you that there was no way this was going to do 171 meters per second, even briefly, for a climb. Trying to nudge it to the sound barrier here, but, well... Going, uh, staying level definitely isn't going to work. Let's just go down a bit, but that's probably a losing game overall. Okay, we are no longer gaining speed even though we're going down. So yeah, Mach 1 is going to be elusive with this. Okay, how drastically does it decelerate when I throw all down? Not as bad as some other planes that I've had. It seems more reasonable than some of the others that I've seen. Okay, we're coming in and we're gonna see how slow this can go. I guess if we were at a lower throttle we could have had enough fuel to last a thousand arc miles. We didn't have to push the throttle all the way and probably probably at about like Mach 0.87 or something you would be able to get the kind of range we're supposed to with this. Well right now we're doing pretty good on the stall speed issue. We're at about uh, 150 knots and we're using about half the pitch authority. Well, even with the throttle way down, it's, it's because we're descending, we're not really getting to the stall speed. Okay, gear down. I wish we could go slower right now, but again, no air brakes. Well, we'll hover over the runway a little bit just to see. Uh, okay, I'm bored. Let's just touch down. Definitely its stall speed is lower than that. Okay. We can stop all the way, but actually I want to see what the minimum takeoff speed is here. We won't go all the way around. But I'll, I'll throttle up again. And let me just pull up sooner and see when we actually lift off. Oh, okay, like at 60 meters per second. All right. Okay, cut. <laughs> Let, let's see, can we touch that back down? Oh, this is probably too much. There's too little room. Oh, we popped. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Okay, okay, okay. We'll end up on the grass over here, but that's all right. Okay. So yeah, a nifty little jet. And I'll try and release it as soon as possible, but again, I want to do two more planes. But the uh, test reasonably successful, except for the fact that I can't quite get to Mach 1.3 but hopefully it will serve some purpose. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.